Hi, my name is Timo Seppola, and I'm going to go over how to take apart a DeLong Mihi Magnifica and do a few simple cleaning things to it, and a few that are not quite so simple. So first off, you're going to start from the back side, and you're going to remove six screws. I have actually modified my coffee maker and put two switches on the back. They are kill switches for the door sensor and the ground tray sensor. That is not necessary, it's just something I did on mine. Alright, basically it just allows me to be able to open the door while the machine's running to be able to see what's going on with it. All right, so once you have taken those six screws out, each side just pops out real quick and easy. Pop the other side out, pull it. This side is much easier to remove if you take out the water container first. Then pulls out, pops off, simple as that back then just falls up okay now the this is one common issue with this uh, that I have not seen any YouTube videos about and I had to figure it out myself these tubes right here tend to get very dirty over time and they require some cleaning so they're very simple to remove all you do is simply pull them off you just simply pull them off and pop them back on. So what I did was I, I took these, pulled them off, and I used a pipe cleaner, scrubbed the inside of them, and then I took, ran some hot water through them. I also put them in a bowl of hot water and let them soak once I had them completely clean, put them back on, and it started tasting much better. Um, I have had one issue where my pump was stopped working. There was no water flow. I simply changed this piece right here. It's fairly easy to do. You need to remove this spring clip right here. You also need to pull out this sort of like a cutter pen, pull that out, and this whole piece just slides out the entire pump with this assembly. The new pump will probably not come with all these pieces so you'll need to pull out these screws disconnect these two power eh, power wires disconnect this hose and change just this piece and put it back in it'll work get us new all right so another major um well not major but another common issue with these is the boiler i'm going to show you how to take off the top and access the boiler you remove these four screws. All right. There's also generally a screw here. I've just left it off so that it's easier to take it apart when I when I need to. I like to take my mine apart on occasion to clean out the grinder, um, just wipe it down, and well, I enjoy pulling things apart. <laughs> uh, there's also another screw here which you can take out, which will make it a little easier to take the top off. All right, so take the, to take the top off, you need to lift this up a little bit and pull it outwards, and it releases these two clips here. Once you have done that, the whole entire top simply removes and you do need to make sure you got all your beans pushed out of the way or they will... No, actually, sorry, with this machine it doesn't work that way. Alright, so lift this out and you are now accessing the top side of it. This right here is the common issue I was referring to. This um, hose right here, a lot of times, it's 
starts to leak. There, this is, let's see. All right, so the, this hose right here is removable. You just simply remove this cotter pin, pull it out. If you pull this screw underneath here, there's an O-ring. When that O-ring goes bad, this thing will start dribbling water. You're gonna notice that you're not getting the correct amount of water. As you can see, there is still a stain here from where this thing leaked. Um, so I had, it, because I did not replace this O-ring, I actually ended up having to replace the entire uh, heater and it is not ex not cheap. It's a, uh, around a hundred dollars, um, so it's you can buy a new O-ring for probably a dollar or two at at your local hardware store. So you're much better off replacing it the second you notice water, and it's really not all that difficult to change. All right. So other things to go over is right here where you're looking down. This this is where there would normally be wires for your door sensor. And when you open the door, as you can see this click engages in here. This is what tells the machine that the door is open or closed. As I said before, I have overridden that. I have brought these wires over to my back panel and I will turn it on so you can see. I'll put my water back in. All right, so now there's no lights on. I go flip the switch. It now thinks that my door is open. If I flip the other switch, then it thinks my ground drawer is out. And I'm able to switch it back and forth. Um, I actually overrode those simply because I had some faulty sensors and I didn't have the sensors available. I had switches available and they were very simple three wire setups. Uh, the other sensor for the ground drawer is located down underneath. If, if you look underneath there, there's a couple brown wires and a purple wire that go to it. And there's just three of them that tie in. One of my prongs, well, because of this water leaking, it actually filled up the inside of this and corroded that sensor. And I ended up, you know, one of the prongs broke off. And rather than trying to get up underneath there, that one's very difficult to change. Another reason why you want to make sure you fix a water issue the second you have it. Um, just because it's on the underside of the machine, it's a lot more work to get at. So you're much better off fixing it right away. Oh. One nice thing about having this sensor here is I can actually see how this thing works with the door open. If any of you have not seen how these machines work, this is basically the basic operation of it. It is really just a simple up and down mechanism and it automatically kicks left and right. And when it hits the bottom, this part automatically flips and empties the grounds in there. It's really not that complex of a machine. It has a low limit sensor. Once it reaches the bottom, it backs off a certain distance and stops. It has a high limit sensor that tells it to stop and basically right now because this is pulled open it has an opening inside of it. When you remove it um, it has compressed to the other setting so you can't see it but when you grind the fresh coffee it drops inside of there then it goes up to the top and this piece right here actually t does the tamping and it just pushes the grounds into the thing. Um, and pumps it right there and spits out the coffee and then it goes down and it ends up leaving a puck above and this little arm, the little arm here pushes it off into this tray. So that's pretty much all there is to this machine. The things that you need to maintain and take, make sure you take care of. Obviously make sure you descale, descale often. If you notice water leaking, issue it immediately. Um, Let's see, uh, this one was a big one. The, even though I descaled my machine every time I should, these still became dirty, and that is gonna happen with every one of these machines. So every one of these hoses should be removed and cleaned periodically. Um, so 
I'll shut this machine off and show you what to do if you don't know what to do with the uh, Okay, I just left that open to show you how this works. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how to clean out the infuser. It's not that difficult of a thing to do. Another thing that can happen with these machines is up inside of here, these spouts can actually get clogged. They say to do it with a toothpick. You can take it apart simply by pulling these two screws out. I will warn you, um, if you take this spring, out, spring loaded mechanism, out, getting that spring back in and located properly is fairly difficult. I did do it once with mine, but if you can uh, get it clean without taking it all completely apart, you might be better off. Alright, so now that the machine is shut off, I can remove this and simply squeeze these, pull this out, bring this over to the sink, rinse it. It's recommended to take this out uh, fairly often, just rinse it. I think they say once a week. All right, so once once you rinse it, that is your kind of your regular maintenance between that and the scaling. Now, over time, these O-rings inside of this will become corroded. So one thing that they say to do is to slide this up and down. If this, if it feels some resistance, those O-rings are still intact. If it slides very easily with absolutely no resistance, just completely loose, which this one is not, um, basically if you it would tip it back and forth, it would just 